All right, this pro tip is all about using stats functions and specifically conditional stats functions to generate pivot style reports. So you may be wondering what the heck I'm talking about. I'm talking about sum ifs, count ifs, average ifs, these conditional stats functions that allow you to summarize data given a certain condition or set of conditions. And when you think about it, that's exactly how a pivot table operates where those conditions are defined by your row labels, your column labels, and your filters. So to give you an example, we're going to be looking at a subset of that IMDB movie data here in columns A through F. And what we've got is a small pivot table view like this, which basically it's filtered down to genre equals action. We've got the top five countries by count of title, and we're summarizing three different metrics or values here. We've got the count of the titles or rows, we've got the sum of the revenue column, and we have the average of the IMDB score column. And the idea here is to produce something like this, which is essentially replicating that exact same table layout and functionality, only we'll be using cell formulas outside of the pivot table environment. To do that, we're going to use these trusty conditional stats functions. We're going to use count ifs to calculate the title count, some ifs to calculate the revenue, and average ifs to calculate the average IMDb score. Now, you might be wondering, if you can do it in a pivot without writing one formula, why would you go through all this extra work and basically recreate the wheel from scratch? So my take is that pivots are a great tool for kind of unstructured, unguided analysis, meaning they're great when you don't really know what you're looking for, and you want to just slice and dice and explore things to learn more about your data. On the other hand, if you know how you want to segment your data and you know which values you want to show as part of something like a report or dashboard, using these stats functions allows you to do that within workbook cells, which will give you a lot more flexibility to design and format and lay out your report exactly as you choose, especially compared to building a pivot style report with things like slicers and pivot charts, which are also great for their own reasons. So the use cases here that I'm going to focus on are designing custom formatted dynamic reports without using pivots and filtering or segmenting your raw data uh, based on a given set of criteria, which is exactly what these functions are designed to do. So let's go ahead into our demo and our pro tip workbook and see if we can make this work. Okay, so from your table of contents, you're going to look for the pivot style reports demo, three star tip. This is a moderate difficulty, so it helps to have a little bit of background in these stats functions. Uh, but even if you don't, hopefully you'll be able to follow along pretty closely. Let's link out to that worksheet. And just like I described, here we've got a subset of the IMDB data. It's got about 3,700 titles. And the columns we have to work with are the titles themselves, the genre, language, country, IMDB score, revenue, and budget. And here we have a pivot table. If we go into our tools, change data source, you'll see that this pivot is indeed connected to our data in columns A through G. Go ahead and press OK. And again, what we've got here is a, a quick view showing the count of the titles, the sum of the revenue, and the average IMDb score are filtered on action titles specifically. And we've got a value filter to show the top five items, or in this case, countries, based on the count of title. So press OK. And here I've just added a little bit of a placeholder blank template where we're going to use these conditional stats formulas to basically replicate the exact values that we're seeing up here. So I've just copied, dropped in the same country names. I've added a cell here, which just contains the word action for now. You could turn that into a data validation dropdown if you'd like. Um, but all we're going to do here is try to replicate these values above. So starting with the count of the title, Obviously, our summarization mode here is a count. So for that reason, we're going to use a count if function. And because we're testing for two criteria, we want to count rows under two cases, one where the country equals USA and two where the genre equals action. Because we have multiple conditions, we're going to use the plural version of that count if function called count ifs and go ahead and open up the parenthesis. And here's where we just feed this formula, these pairs of criteria ranges and criterias. So our first criteria is country. Those country values live in column D. 
We'll press F4 to lock it in. And the criteria that we're looking for, what we're trying to filter within that column D, in this case is the country named USA. We can leave this relative in this case, or you can cycle with F4 until you've locked your column because these country labels will always live right here in column I, but we want the row to shift down to UK in row 17, France in row 18, and so on and so forth. And let's comma over to our next criteria range, which is the genre range, which lives here in column B, F4 to lock it in. And the criteria for the genre lives right here in cell J13, and it will always live right here in J13. So we can fix that entire reference, close the parenthesis, press enter, and there you go. 702 titles or rows for USA action films, which matches our pivot table above. And because we've set our reference types correctly, we can simply drag that value down and get 69, 27, 24, 14. So we've got a match. All is good there. Now we're going to follow a very, very similar approach here to calculate revenue, except we're not counting this time, we're summing. So same exact logic. We're going to use sum ifs. And the only difference is we're going to start with the sum range. The values that we want to add up live here in column F, the revenue values. And now we just enter those criteria ranges and values just like we did before. So first criteria is country in D. Criteria is USA. Lock the I reference. Second criteria is the genre in B. And the final criteria too is action in J13. Lock it in, close the parenthesis, press enter. There you go, $59 billion. Apply it down, 3.099, 1.076, 6.49, and 8.43. Boom, we've got a match. We've essentially just done the job of a pivot table using these conditional stats functions. Now, last but not least, we want the average of the IMDB score. So you guessed it, we're going to use average ifs this time. Same as sum ifs, except instead of a sum range, we're going to plug in an average range. In this case, that's E, and then go through that same process. Criteria range one, country, want USA. Criteria range two, genre, and we want action. Lock it in, close it off, press enter, and drag it down. 623, 656, all the way down to 648. And there you have it. And now because these conditional stats functions are pointing to cells that users can actually update or change, that means that our values in this little report that we've built are completely dynamic, just like a pivot. So if, for instance, we filtered on adventure films here, you could change your criteria cell, J13, to adventure, and there you go. You get the same matching values. So we've almost like built our own little pivot table um, or pivot style report at least using these conditional stats functions like count if, sum if, and average ifs. Really helpful tool, especially if you need to build reports or dashboards uh, to summarize your data and want a little bit more flexibility in terms of the layout and the design.